Hey everybody, Four Gun Guy here. Uh, today I wanted to do a video on my new powder measuring system. It's the Auto Trickler V3 from Adam McDonald, and it's paired with the AMD FX120i scale for precision powder drops. Now I've been using my trusty Charge Master Lite for about uh, nine months now, and it's it's been really good uh, for me. Uh, I did want to get a little more accuracy. If you look at some of my other videos, I'm kind of a stickler on let's get things as tight as we can. So if there's any issues uh, at a match, it's me and it's not my equipment or, or anything like that. That's a great quote from my friend Jeff. Uh, if you know my videos, then you'll know that I do a lot of research. And for me, this Auto Trickler V3 was the best value for the money when you get to this level of uh, scale and powder system. Now, what we're gonna do in this video then is compare these two. I'm gonna drop two 10 round strings, one 10 round from the Auto Trickler, one 10 round from the Charge Master Lite. We're gonna measure things like the, the weight accuracy of both of these. We're gonna measure the speed of the drops. Uh, this is faster, but is it that much faster than the Charge Master Lite? Then we're going to go to the range, we're going to shoot those two strings, and we're going to see how things turn out from an accuracy standpoint, and I don't mean from a grouping standpoint. I mean what difference in those powder drops, in those 10 round strings, how big of a difference is that going to make out at distance? So once you get out to 6, 7, 8, 9, 1,000, 1,100 yards, what is the difference between the powders that's, that have been dropped from these two uh, chargers? So, without further ado, let's get into it. Well, let's talk about what we're going to cover. Uh, the first thing we're going to cover are the benefits of the Auto Trickler. And really, this is just a overview comparison of, say, the Auto Trickler as opposed to like a Charge Master Lite or even a beam scale. Then we're going to look at the Auto Trickler V3 overview and how I've set up my Auto Trickler uh, for use on my bench. Then I'm going to do some initial powder throws. I'm not going to get into super detail on calibration and all that. That's all in the book. So, uh, But I'll show you some initial powder throws and some things to watch out for. We'll get into weight measurement uh, between the Auto Trickler uh, V3 and the Charge Master Lite. Then we're going to look at a loading speed comparison. How much time do you really save, uh, if any, with the Auto Trickler V3? Uh, finally, an accuracy comparison. So an accuracy here, I'm talking about uh, velocities, SDs, ESs, and how that translates to shots at distance. So I'm not talking about groupings on a 100-yard target. And then finally, is it worth it? Is this uh, Auto Trickler V3 worth it to you and for what you need to uh, uh, use it for? Or would an RCBS uh, Charge Master Lite or two of them be sufficient? So let's get to it. Let's talk about why you might be looking at the Auto Trickler V3 or any other higher end powder measuring equipment. If you're measuring your powder using a balance beam, for example, then you realize that you're sacrificing speed for accuracy. And most balance beam scales will give you a plus or minus 0.1 grain accuracy. You may want to increase the speed of your reloading without sacrificing too much accuracy and move into the electronic powder measuring world. Now using something like the RCBS Charge Master Lite that I've been using, you'll get plus or minus 0.1 grain accuracy, but with a much faster drop. You may get to a point like I did, where you want to remove as many outside influences on your reloading process as possible in order to minimize the effect of non-optimum round development on the accuracy of your shots. Now, I'm gonna pause here. Notice I said minimize, not eliminate, the effect of non-optimum round development on the accuracy of your shots. 
You will always have some inconsistency in your loads, folks, period. But as my good friend Jeff has said, he wants to eliminate as many inconsistencies as he can so that if he misses the target, it's most likely on him and not on his equipment or his loads. And I've really adopted that line of thinking. So I'm using what I believe are some of the better pieces of equipment and a good process, as you've seen in my other videos, to prep my brass. Uh, and I've been using the Chargemaster Lite for about eight months, and I've been really happy with it, with good SDs and ESs in most cases. But I wanted to remove that one last piece of possible cartridge inconsistency, the charge weight, which is why I went to the Auto Trickler V3 to get a little more accuracy. Now, I know that some of you will be asking about the new RCBS uh, Matchmaster and others like the Sartorius scale. All I can tell you is that the pros that I shoot with, and uh, believe me, I'm not a pro, just the guys that I shoot with, use the Auto Trickler VX setup with the FX120i scale. Honestly, for the money, uh, you know, it's, it really compares much better, in my opinion, to the Matchmaster. Uh, I feel that you're getting a better setup with the FX120i uh, and the Auto Trickler V3. Now, others are going to comment on the virtues of continuing to use a beam scale. And while I appreciate that belief, I'm talking about reloading 300 to 400 rounds of 6.5 Creedmoor ammunition every month, which is what I do to maintain my practice regiment and have around 120 rounds for matches. I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna reload that many rounds that often using a beam scale. I just don't have that kind of free time, or quite frankly, that much patience. So please remember you know, what I say in all my videos. This is what I'm doing, not what I'm telling you to do. So now let's look at the upgrades I made and some setup operational tips for the Auto Trickler V3. Well, here's the setup. So this is the uh, Auto Trickler V3 with the FX120i scale. Now, <clears throat> note that the FX120i scale, it's not built for powder reloading, okay? This is, <laughs> this is built for scientific use. So you'll need to get used to the buttons that really don't mean anything to you, but still have a purpose for powder loading. So, you know, one of the first things you'll do is Probably come down here and do what I did, put some, some uh, labels to these. Uh, the instructions are fairly clear, but <clears throat> look, don't just set this thing up and then start throwing powder. Uh, you will regret it. You need to just get used to it. Uh, throw a few loads, uh, put them back in the hopper, and, and just get used to how this thing works with your phone and uh, the trickler, the, the uh, auto throw. Uh, once you get used to that, then uh, then things will come come fairly easily and quickly. Now let's talk about the foundation here. So here's what I did. Uh, I took a piece of wood and I just built this this little platform. This is like three quarter inch uh, plywood. I have some medium uh, uh, medium foam feet on it. Uh, and then I put, I got kind of a thicker mouse pad to put the scale on. And this, to me, kind of gives a level of isolation and insulation uh, from the rest of, my, uh, rest of my bench. Now then, this is sitting on an anti-static mat that uh, is grounded to a wall plug. So when I wear the wrist strap that I'm wearing right here, there's a wrist strap. When I wear that wrist strap, I'm grounded so as not to damage any of the electronics in the scale or in the auto throw. Now, one more thing that I did do is I did get a electrical box or uh, electrical stabilizer. So this is just a box. I'll put all this uh, uh, on, uh, on the video, but this is where the ground is plugged in. And it's just a plug, right? It's just a, well, you'll, you'll see when I put it in there. But this, uh, this box stabilizes uh, the electrical current that comes to 
the scale. So these are some things that on top of the cost of the scale, you're going to want to think about uh, when you look at this scale. As far as upgrades go, really the only upgrade uh, that I made was this clear pla uh, plexiglass top from Area 419. And you really do need to see this because you really need to see everything that's going on in here because you could have one kernel of powder spill out onto this platform and that's just throwing you off by anywhere from two to four one hundredths uh, of a grain. So with all that said, let's talk about warming it up. Well, before I get to warming it up, I did want to kind of go over the instructions. Uh, these are pretty good instructions. Adam's done a good job uh, how you're going to put it together, how you're going to connect everything, what everything means, how to use the mobile device operation. We're going to get to that in a second. What all the buttons mean, mean. so you can see that, yes, these are the ones that I put the labels to, just as uh, he recommends. Some troubleshooting and then adjusting the flow rate and uh, and whatnot. So good book. The uh, A and D uh, book is uh, <laughs> written by typical engineers and uh, it's, it's pretty clear, but you're gonna need to know uh, what sections to use for what purposes. And there's really just one section in this book and we're gonna get to this in a second. And that's how to calibrate the scale using an external weight. So this is on page 30. So if you're if you're going to get one of these things, just pay attention, mark it down right now, go to page 30 in this book, and how to calibrate the scale. But overall instructions are pretty darn good. Well, let's talk about warming uh, the unit, unit up, calibration, and then setting zero. So look, if, if you're going to use this, like if I know I'm going to drop some powder on uh, Tuesday, I'll set this up just as it is right now on Monday. So I'll plug it in. Uh, I may not turn it on, but I'll at least plug it in for a few hours. And then Tuesday morning, I'll go ahead and turn it on and let it sit all day. Uh, these uh, scales are really designed for lab use and they're designed to be on for long periods of time. So make sure you let this warm up. Uh, the instructions say 30 minutes, but uh, friends of mine who use it have said, yeah, let it warm up for a few hours at least. So, so there's that. And then <clears throat> from a calibration standpoint, you can see that it's saying uh, 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 grains right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down this cal button. Let me get this call out. <clears throat> and then uh, it displays cal zero. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, hit print. And it's going to show 100. I'm going to put a 100 gram weight on it. That's not grains, that's grams. And then I'm going to hit print again. And it should give us the all clear. It says end, which means it's all clear. I'm going to take this weight off. And now notice that it switches back to grains. Now, I'm not going through the entire setup here. I'm just showing you some quick and dirty stuff. The other thing you want to notice is that there's a level here. I'm not going to just zoom in on it. But you want to make sure that this is level. And the other thing is, as you're leveling, don't be in a hurry. Turn these, these uh, leveling wheels. You'll see a leveling wheel over here. You see another one over here. You turn these very slowly because it takes a while for that bubble to move in there. It's not like a level you're used to. So with that being said, now we set the zero. So I've got the cup that comes with it. And this is a really nice cup. Now some other people are ordering the 419 uh, powder cups and those are good. They're taller, they're aluminum, um, but they're also like $100 or 150 bucks or something like that. I'm sorry, I'm just not going to spend that much money on it. So what I'll do is I will set the cup on there. And a couple things you want to make sure of is that there's nothing else on the platter. You've got the cup set and it's clean, right? And now it should read, or it does for me, 
2. I'm going to hit re zero or three zero. And it's now zeroed with the cup. Okay. Now I want to show you something about the scale itself and how, um, how sensitive it is. So right now it reads zero. I'm going to step about four feet over here. That was me blowing on the scale from about four feet away with just a very light breath. So you can see it's going to take it a, a second or two to come back to zero. These are very, very sensitive machines. That is why when you set this up, and my buddy gave me this advice, when you set this up, put a plexiglass piece on the front. Leave this side open. Okay, That's because when you're standing in front of the scale, you're naturally going to breathe and it's going to pick that up, All right? So just, uh, just some tips there. So basically how this works is we're going to fill this up with some powder, All right? Here's the, the, uh, the bin for the powder. We're going to open this. There's a little X there and we're going to turn this to open. It's going to pour some powder down into the auto throw. This is the auto throw section. We adjust the auto throw with this little adjustment screw here. And this whole, whole setup here is to drop that initial load. So if I'm loading 41.7 grains of Reloader 16, I'm going to probably set this to, to drop about 39 and a half grains. And then the auto trickler here will take over and this will, it's just a trickler, like a manual trickler, but it's set up with all the uh, electronic components. And this trickler will then trickle in the rest of the powder quickly, or however quickly we want it to trickle in, up to your target weight. That's really how it works. It's, it's not a really, <clears throat> excuse me, complex setup. You just have to remember some things. Like number one, uh, when you're loading your powder, keep this closed. Uh, when you go to unload your powder at the end of the loading session, close that up. Because if you don't, you're going to pull this thing out and powder is going to spill everywhere. Okay. So it's little things like that. And then we're going to, uh, so I tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, set up the, uh, the phone. And then we'll, uh, I'll show you how that works and we'll do some sample throws. All right, so here we are. Uh, we've got the auto throw set. We've got the speed on the auto trickler set. And that adjustment is on the back of the device here. Uh, and again, it's all in the instructions. I'm not going to go through all of that. But I also then have a small glass cup with some loose powder in it. Now, you guys are going to be... Um, I'm just a freak about this stuff. So, uh, I don't even go, I don't even deal with the 0.02 accuracy. I want it even more accurate than that. <laughs> so I tend to, uh, drop kernels. Uh, some people do, some people don't. I'm not going to do it today just to, for our comparison purposes, because I really do want to see how this is going to turn out. But what I do is I have the powder in there. I'm going to now open this up, you can hear a little bit of the powder uh, drop. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open the mobile app and I'm gonna throw some uh, powder. So let me, let me bring that up. All right, well, here's the mobile device uh, for the auto trickler. And as you can see right now, now this is on my iPad. You can use this, on, I have this on my Android phone as well. And since I'm filming with my phone, I thought I'd do it on the iPad. Right now, it says disconnected tap to stand, so, uh, scan, so I'm going to tap that. It says auto trickler found, so I'm going to say connect. And now it's going to say enter a target weight. Now, before we do that, remember, back here at the scale, everything is zeroed out. I've loaded powder. I've opened up the powder bin, so the powder is flowing into the uh, auto throw. The auto throw is set for, for what I want it to be set at. And then we have the auto trickler. But now what we need to do is to make sure everything's going to function properly. So what I'm going to do is come over to the mobile and I'm just going to say 
cycle auto throw. And when I do that, the auto throw just cycled. I'm going to hit it again. And really, this is just to make sure that the powder from up here in the bin has filled everything down here in the auto throw that needs to be filled with powder. Okay, so there's the first part of what I'm doing. Now I'm going to come back over here to the device and I'm going to say start motor. Now this is going to start the trickler and you can see that it's trickling out powder. I'm going to hit stop. So now everything is set for my auto throw, right? So I'm going to empty that. I'm going to make sure that it's empty. I'm going to put it back on the platter. Everything reads zero. And now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to enter a target weight. Target weight is going to be 41.7. Okay. The second I tap this, it's going to throw that target weight. So let's watch. Tap. There's the auto throw throwing about 39.5 grains. And now the trickler is trickling. And it's going to stop here in a second. And what did we stop at? 41.7. So you're usually getting within 0 0.02 uh, of your weight. Now, what's going to happen is when I take this off, and if I was going to load it into a case, I'd drop it into a case. But here I'm just dropping it up above. I'm going to come back down. Notice that the weight is the weight of the cup. I'm going to put this on. It's going to go to zero. And the second it goes to zero, it throws again. Okay. So with that being said, it's, uh, it, it's pretty fast at what it's doing. You can see that the weight's getting up there, six, 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 eight. And we end up with uh, 41.68. Now, if you're like me, if I'm gonna load match, then I would take a very small grain of powder, maybe, and I would drop it in there, and we would see it go to 41.7, right? If you're that crazy about it, you can do that. Um, if you read uh, Adam's story, or blog, I think it is, on, uh, how much drop there is in a kernel of powder, you probably won't do it, right? You'll get within the 200th uh, uh, of a grain and you'll call it a day, which is what I do with all my practice stuff. Uh, but like right here, 4170. Okay, so it looks like we're dialed in. Uh, so with that being said, let's move on to the next section. Well, here's my Charge Master Lite that I've been using. Uh, so we're going to check the accuracy of this. I've always wanted to do that. So let's go 41.7, which is the uh, charge. I'm going to hit go. We're off to the races, 41.3. Four, five, six, seven. Okay, 41.7. All right, well, I just wanted to uh, kind of give you the idea of what it's like to sit there and wait on a Charge Master Lite. And look, it's a great machine. It's been really good to me uh, over the past nine, 10 months, um, but it is slow. I even know guys who have two of them, so they have them both going, you know, uh, in, in tandem so they can uh, load faster. But look, all that aside, speed aside, I want you to look at this graph. I want you to look at the 15 loads I just dropped with the Charge Master Lite and the Auto Trickler V3. What I want you to see is if you pause this, um, you will see the big spread with the Charge Master Lite. Now, the standard deviation with the Charge Master Lite was 0.05. The standard deviation with the uh, Auto Trickler was 0.02, less than half of that of the uh, Charge Master Lite. The spread, though, that's what I want you to focus on. Down there in the lower right, the spread of the Charge Master Lite was two tenths. And the, the spread on the Auto Trickler was six hundredths. Okay, 
So those, those are big differences, folks. Um, if you look at the numbers, you can see that, uh, yeah, these are big differences. And look, in close, do these differences make much difference? Probably not. As I have said before, if you're a hunter and you don't need the speed of reloading and you're shooting out to 250 and, and in, which most, uh, you know, uh, deer hunters do. Now, if you're going up into Colorado Rockies or into Canada and you're doing big elk hunting and all that, and you've got 600 yard shots, I get it. But for just deer hunting, would the light suffice? Probably so. But if you're in competition and you're going to shoot out to 1,000, 1,200 yards, you can really see the difference here on this chart and in that data between these two pieces of equipment. All right, well, let's look at the real process here. So I'm set up the way I would normally be set up to reload. I'm gonna put my powder cup on there. We're coming up. <clears throat> We've got 41.7 on the button. Take this off, dumping my powder, putting this on, put that over here, here. Here. Loaded. By the time I'm done, I have another load ready. So I'm going to show you this with uh, these three. So we just did five cartridges. I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave the uh, cup off so it doesn't pour some more. These are going to be my five cartridges that I take to the range to match on. Okay, let's look at just a couple then using the Charge Master Lite. All right, let's go through the same process here using the Charge Master Lite. I've got it set to auto. I'm dialing in 41.7. And off we go. Forty one point three. And this is generally and look, I'm only going to probably do two of these because this is really painful. Uh, this is generally the biggest issue. So we've got forty one point seven, which we're not really sure that that's forty one point seven, but we're going to trust it that back on it's going to reset now and I'm going to bring this over bullet see this is where that 8 to probably 12 seconds for each case starts to add up, right? Um, and so, you know, the next thing we're gonna look at here is the accuracy between these uh, two strings. And uh, so let's go ahead and look at that and then we'll have some final thoughts. That's 10 shots with the auto trickler, or with the uh, Charge Master Lite. We have an SD of 5.3, average velocity of 27.69, and an ES of 16. So not too bad. Alright, there we have 
SD of 4.4, average 2773, with a 13 ES. That's what the auto trickler loads. Let's do some analysis. Well, let's look at this analysis here. Uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. So what I did is I took 10 rounds. Remember, we loaded 15 for speed, but I took 10 of those 15 rounds, uh, random 10, took them to the range. You just saw me shoot them. And these were the results. Now, I'm, I'm using these results from uh, Excel calculations. So if you look at the Charge Master Lite, uh, the SD508, ES16, and the average uh, uh, speed or velocity 2770. Auto Trickler, SD of 4.21, an ES of 13, and an average velocity of 2774. Uh, I'm kind of shocked at these results. I thought they would be way different between these two. And uh, this small of a difference doesn't, uh, it, it just surprises me. So uh, anyway, let's look at accuracy. Okay, so what I did was I plugged in these numbers into the shooterscalculator.com ballistic trajectory calculator. So I took the numbers from the auto trickler and the numbers from the charge master light and then I plotted them on this graph. Now this doesn't really show much, so let's go ahead and switch to the numbers. Well, the numbers are very interesting, aren't they? Uh, let's start with the Auto Trickler V3 on the left. If you start, uh, so this is what I did. I put the low, lowest velocity and the highest velocity in the calculator. So really what you have on the uh, top is the lowest velocity. So you can see that, let's take 500 yards for example. At 500 yards, your uh, elevation, uh, you're losing 48.29 inches in drop, right? That's your drop uh, for the lowest velocity. For the, lowest, for the highest velocity at 500 yards, you're losing 47.76, which is a difference of what? Mm, about a half, half an inch. Uh, let's just jump right out to a thousand yards. At a thousand yards, with the lowest velocity from the auto trickler, you're losing, you're dropping 295.7 inches. With the uh, highest velocity from the auto trickler, you're dropping 292.48 inches. Uh, folks, that's about what? Eh, Three, three inches, three and a quarter, maybe. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, well, I screwed up a little bit on this because on the Charge Master Lite, I put the uh, low velocity on the bottom uh, and the high velocity on the top. So <laughs> I apologize for that. But it, look, if you look at the 500, uh, the difference between those two is about uh, a little over uh, half an inch, about 0.6 inches. And if we go to the thousand yards uh, on those, uh, it looks like the difference is uh, on the low uh, velocity, negative 297.33, high velocity, negative 293.28. So the difference there is about, what, four inches, a little more than four inches. So again, not that big of a deal between these two. Um, you know, if you just look at these, uh, at these drops, it's amazing. Now, one other thing I just want to point out is when you look at the elevation adjustments, right, for these. So let's go out to a thousand yards again on the Auto Trickler V3. The difference between the elevations at a thousand yards is 8.12 and 8.21. So you're right there at about a tenth of a mil, right? On the Charge Master Light, you're a little more than a tenth of a mil, but still. That's, they're both about the same. My point is you'd be off a tenth of a mil on both. So, you know, I don't know. It's just not, uh, wow, it's just not that, it's not as big of a difference as I thought it would be. 
And I'm just trying to be honest here in this uh, comparison. So uh, let's go ahead and go to final thoughts. Well, I don't know about you, but I was pretty shocked by the results. Um, <laughs> you know, really, uh, I, I can't say anything bad about either one of these powder measuring systems. Like I said, I've been using this Charge Master Lite for about nine months. Now, I don't feel bad because I bought it from my friend for a hundred bucks. So I didn't pay the 289 that it usually costs. Uh, this Charge Master, or this uh, Auto Tripler V3, on the other hand, as I said in the beginning, this thing is about four times the cost of a Charge Master Lite. When you get everything said and done, like I had in the video, right? The mat, conditioner, uh, the, the plastic cover up here. Is it worth that much more? I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you one way or the other. I have to say, I love the speed of this thing. The accuracy makes me feel good when I know that I'm within 0 0.02 grains every time I drop the powder in here. Now, let's back up and say, did we see that that made that big of a difference? Meh, out to 1,100 yards, a little bit, but not that much. So look, let me just say this. If you're in competition and you wanna to try to get the best you can be uh, in long range competition, you'll probably wanna go with something like this. If you're in competition and you just want to go out there and shoot and have a good time, you know what you could do? Yeah, you could get two of these babies just like my buddy Don does. Put them side by side and run them side by side. You'll still end up with about the same time as this, maybe even a little faster. And are your results going to be that much different? I don't think so. So I leave it up to you. If you're into the high tech stuff, this is a great tool to have. If you just want something to load some, some uh, cartridges and shoot decently in a match, then I think this is a great value for your money. So there you have it. Hey, I want to really thank you for sticking around for this one. I know it was a long video. I didn't want it to be this long, but I also wanted to include all of the numbers, all of the readings, everything that I thought was important to making this decision because it is a big decision. Four times the cost of this. That's a big jump. So, again, hope this helped. And uh, please, if you liked it, please like. And uh, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel because I have a lot more coming up. Hey, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate you watching. Shoot straight.